I feel that for students, uh, being able to hear a, an orchestral work of theirs uh, in as natural as possible electronic format is incredibly useful as a learning tool for orchestration, for composition itself, because then they can actually hear the work uh, in its entirety in a way that is, as I said, not a cheating way. Uh, it's, it's a true, natural presentation of the uh, voices of the lines that you use, uh, and therefore it's a good assessment tool for a composer to, to adjust orchestrations, instrumentations, dynamics, tempi. Uh, even I remember I changed a detail in a harp, which because of hearing and trusting the fact that far from being falsified by fake miking and so on, the naturalness of the orchestra, the way you had set it up, allowed me to, to realize that with an extra little doubling that I had added in the harp, all of a sudden you could hear the harp much more clearly than we could before with no change in dynamics, no change in volume control that you did. I would indicate that actually it's a pretty good gauge for many orchestrational issues. Uh, I'm a firm believer that orchestrations should be done before uh, and uh, that you do that based on your craft, your technique, your knowledge. But once it's done, I think that having a, a, a virtual recording of your work is an incredibly useful tool for a young musician learning how to compose, how to orchestrate. I would say that this is potentially an, an, an invaluable tool for high school composition students and undergraduate composition students uh, in universities that may not have a venue to do recordings of large orchestra pieces uh, so that they can actually hear their work, discuss it, and again have a realistic version and rendition of their piece, not an unrealistic one. Uh, when you hit MIDI uh, on Finale or Sibelius, those are unrealistic uh, sound worlds that those things are creating. Uh, those, those have nothing to do with reality in a sense that uh, they're unmusically controlled, they're just simply dynamic, they're, they're, they're not dynamic uh, according to how it would really work in an orchestra. And I feel that what you have created with the, the Ravel Virtual Studio is a, a, a true virtual orchestra where there is trust that it is accurate to the true experience in an orchestra, uh, much, much more realistically than uh, when one clicks, you know, let me hear on MIDI or uh, Finale or Sibelius. Uh, and in that sense, I think for young kids, um, for whether they be in high school or undergraduate programs or, or even graduate programs, it would be an invaluable tool for them uh, to be able to hear their works. It's a valuable tool for anyone who writes music. Uh, there are adults who have joined the musical forces late and would like to uh, hear a work that they might have were, uh, composed uh, in orchestral form and have no access again to an orchestra. And this will give them a realistic, good, and reliable version of their work. Uh, there are very young students who have no access again to an orchestra uh, or to instruments and who can hope to hear their work, as I said, as a learning experience for them to better their, their, their craft and to uh, hear what works, what didn't work, and so on in their orchestrations. Uh, I think these things are invaluable tools.